If you go outside right now and look at all the hatchbacks and even four-wheel drives driving by, you'll notice that on the back window, there are these like visor things coming out, one on the top and then one on each side going down the rear window, like what we have here in like figure 16. These things popped up a few years ago and were adopted incredibly quickly throughout the automotive industry. So they must be good for aerodynamics, right? Well, that is what we're looking at today. What are the effects of these things on the aerodynamics of a car and how do different ones affect that? So to look at that, we're looking at this paper called, if I scroll up here, Effect of the aerodynamic elements of the hatchback tailgate on the aerodynamic drag of a vehicle. Now, a really good plot showing just how important a car's drag is compared to the rolling resistance is in figure two down here. And we often get a question about when a car's drag is important and so on. So looking at this graph, for those of you interested as to when the drag really takes over as the main resistive force, you can really determine that on your own requirements. So for example, we see that generally at around 60 to 70 kph, so about 40 miles per hour, the drag of a car pushes back more than the rolling resistance. So at this point, the drag is actually the main resistive force on the car. But one thing to note is that with this graph, it's showing at about 55 kph. Um, it's funny because every graph has a little different value here where this line crosses over between aerodynamic drag and rolling resistance. So it really depends on the car too. I mean, if you have a very high drag area, which is the drag coefficient multiplied by the frontal area, then this speed will be lower because the drag plays a much greater role than a car at a, with a lower drag area. But anyway, this intersects at around 60 to 70 kph on average. And we can see that the speed increases here, the drag becomes greater and greater as well, and it's faster than a linear fashion would dictate. And that is because drag is a function of the velocity squared. So if everything else stays the same, the drag line is a quadratic function. But one thing to emphasize is that you hear that above 60 to 70 kph, that's where the drag is the most dominant resistive force, and aerodynamics is now important. But I think that there is definitely a case to be made for why even at lower speeds, aerodynamic drag and aerodynamics in general are still important. So one thing that we can see here is that even at 40 kph, the drag force is more than half the rolling resistance already. So even at low speeds, you can tell that the drag is important still. It's still a major component of the resistive force on the car. So in my opinion, we can conclude that pretty much at any speed that is high enough to run down people, the drag is an important factor. And I think that's how we really should look at it as opposed to saying, okay, well, at 60 kph, that's when drag is now the most important thing and we should focus on it. It's really more at most uh, velocities that it is important. And it's really like, if you can run down people, then drag is important. That's probably the main criterion there I think we should fulfill. Anyway, this paper presents a lot of basic car aero through here. I'm not going to go through all of it because I think that you should probably know most of it already. If you don't, then feel free to download this paper. It's open access and you can find the link below. So the DOI was at the top as well with the rest of the paper, but you can find the paper down in below anyway. So anyway, one thing I do want to cover quickly is that in addition to the pure aerodynamics of a car, something called soiling is also important. So no one wants a soiled car because that means that the car is dirty. Now in figure seven, this shows the soiling process on the back window of a car as well as the difference between a sedan and a hatchback. So if I zoom out a little bit here, the recirculating flow in any wake really can carry dirt and deposit it on the car. That is especially bad when it comes to the windows because of the reduced visibility and hence reduced safety. So controlling the wake, particularly for hatchbacks and wagons and for drives as well, is even more important from that point of view. Anyway, let's move on. So to look at how this rear design, which the authors are calling a finlet and spoiler combo, there are a few different designs they're considering. So the first is the baseline case, which we see in figure eight here. This is just a regular little one stuck on the production car. It has a spoiler and it's a little bit jutting out, but there aren't any fins down the side windows. So it's just kind of inbuilt. Um, and this design was super common, maybe 10 years ago or so. We then have design A, which is in figures 9, 10, and 11, and they call this type the tailgate spoiler, which has quite a large spoiler to begin with. It's much larger than the original one. And then there are some small fins, like moderately sized fins coming down the rear window. So the researchers say that first, this is large and a sharp spoiler, and the tailgate spoiler here is optimized to 
in regards to the instantaneous separation of the airflow from the reel. So that improves the stability of the car because you have a consistent point at which the flow detaches from the car. Therefore, you have the consistent forces on the car. Without the spoiler, the flow can then wrap around and detach unsteadily as happens over bluff bodies. That unsteadiness is really a function of unsteady pressures and then that creates an unsteady force on the car which makes it harder to drive. Now, the fins are there, as the researchers say, to create a trailing edge to the car. That is away from the rear window to begin with and then that helps prevent turbulent flow near the glass. So that should help the aerodynamics, and we'll see if it does, but also it should probably help soiling because it keeps the highly turbulent flow away from the window and then the dirt as well. So now in figures 12 to 14, we see design B. So just by looking at the design, we can see that there is like this kink between the spoiler and the top horizontal um, thing that the fins. Overall, it features the exact same tech as design A, but a different look to it. The researchers say that this is uh, designed to reduce, it reduces visibility in the car, so it probably won't work in real life. But design C, we can see the exact same features um, as we had in design B. Um, the authors say that it is a two-piece spoiler that contemplates the incorporation of a rear brake light. I have no idea what that means. There's a brake light on it though. Anyway, comparing that one with the other designs, it's obvious that this spoiler is much longer and then the fins extend down the rear window much more too. So even compared to design B, which has pretty much the same elements, the spoiler and the fins, this is just much more exaggerated. So I guess we could kind of think of this as the most extreme iteration of the spoiler and fin ideal. So anyway, these researchers used CFD, but I can't find any details about their setup other than it was at just at 140 kph, which is the speed you need to test cars in order to get them certified. But I really don't know anything else. It could be RANS, DES, I have no idea about the meshing or time stepping. There's no mesh independent study or validation. So going forward, we should probably really just look at the trends and definitely not trust the numbers. It, if the designs follow similar trends, then I think that it's fine for a general understanding for this aero tech. But on the other hand, if you're interested in doing CFD or anything you really like, um, then check out our courses on OpenFoam. It's a completely free CFD software and, and incredibly powerful. And you can find them in the link below. So anyway, let's go into the results now. So in figure 18, we have a pretty cool figure. It's really interesting. And I'll explain what it is for those of you who haven't, haven't seen something like this before. So the y-axis is the amount of drag coefficient produced over the vehicle. And then the x-axis is the distance along the car. In this particular case, zero is centered on the front axle. And then you go negative as you go towards the front and positive towards the back. So we have two lines, one green one and one red one. Both wiggle around. The red one is what they call the modified spoiler. So that uh, is effectively design C here, this really extreme version in figures 15 to 17 but then without the side fins coming down the windows too. So it's just the large spoiler. Then the green line is the exact same spoiler, but now with those finlets, so it's the complete stop. So those plates come down the rear now. Now, as we go along the car, for most of it, the values are positive. That means that the car is producing lift in the sense of the drag coefficient. Now at the front, we see that even here, the rear window features um, to affect the drag production. So the rear window features are all the way at the back of the car and the hood is being affected. Um, they have strong upstream effects with the finlets consistently producing about a one count less drag coefficient uh, over the hood. Now keep in mind that we don't know how accurate the CFD is, but still the finlets seem to have quite a strong upstream effect, which is important to note. Now, as we head over the roof and underbody sections, the two setups don't really have any differences. There are very minor changes and that's probably within the CFD uncertainty. So there's nothing really there. Then as we hit the rear window, we see major changes again. So over the spoiler, the fillets actually shift forward the jump in the drag coefficient production. I'm not sure exactly what's happening here um, because we don't have much information about the wake. Uh, we'll see some later on, but right now it seems like perhaps the finlets are moving the wake closer to the rear window, perhaps. Uh, I don't know. We'll see later. But then we see that once we've cleared the rear window and are looking at over the boot face, so this really the last portion of the figure, the drag coefficient drops a lot for the finlet design. So there definitely seems to be some changes to the wake structure, otherwise we wouldn't get such a large change in the drag coefficient. 
And in the legend, the researchers say that for the spoiler without finlets, if the drag coefficient is three counts lower than the standard car, then with the finlets, the drag coefficient is now six counts lower. So in figures 19 and 20, we see the researchers here have called the drag distribution map over the cars with various setups. Let me zoom in a little bit because it's a little bit of an interesting setup here. Anyway, so from what I can tell, um, this drag distribution is where the drag is produced in effect. And in figure 19, we see the effects of adding the little spoiler onto the regular car, so that tiny little one there. And there really only seems to be a slight difference around maybe where the car's badges. So in the middle section here, it's a little bit uh, lower drag, so that's good. The rest of the face looks pretty similar though. So this um, spoiler here doesn't seem to make too much of a difference other than this badge area in the center of the actual uh, back here. Then in figure 20, we see the effects of the really large spoiler. So what is given in figure 15 here, that um, massive one here, <laughs> what that does, but again, without finlets on the left and then with finlets on the right. So something that is strange to me is that if we look at the rear window near the top, uh, with finlets, which is the right here, we see that there's significantly less drag being produced. Now in figure 18, this region should have more drag um, with the finlets as we saw here, um, because I can't see any other region that produces a lot of drag in this plane. So I don't know why this is happening, why we have seemingly lower drag for this figure here in the right, but then when we go to this figure 18, it shows less drag around this region. So I don't know. If you have any comments, let me know uh, below. Anyway, then over the lower half of the car, really only around the badge area again, do we see appreciable changes with the reduced drag from the finlets. But the great thing about these plots is that we can compare the four together and doing so shows that with the larger spoiler, so the bottom two figures here, regardless of whether we have finlets or not, there is less drag on the rear, especially around the top of the rear window. And that um, is a massive deal compared to the uh, regular production car, that's probably going to come with a lower drag as well, which is perhaps where we're getting this lower drag option coming from too, from this lower window, this upper window region. So now in figures 21 and 22, we see the total pressure coefficient maps in a cup plane just behind the cars. The total pressure coefficient is essentially how much energy the flow still has, where one means it's the same and lower values is worse. And if you want to learn more about the math behind the total pressure coefficient, then check out a video on our YouTube channel called Error Fundamentals Number 33, Total Pressure Coefficient Explained. So the top left is for the regular car, and the top right is for with the little spoiler, like you can see in the right of figure 19 here. Then the bottom left is with the large spoiler, but no finlets, and the bottom right is the large spoiler with finlets. So for the bottom row, it seems like the larger spoiler is reducing energy under the car, this AI assistant thing is coming up. There we go, it's, it's gone. So it's reducing it under the car, um, but then increasing it around the wheels, perhaps the rear wheels. So maybe um, some of that drag reduction is coming from a better flow around the rear wheels. And it might seem odd that the spoiler and finlets have such a large effect so low down. But if we look again at figures 19 and 20, where we saw that the spoiler with finlets really does change um, and reduces the drag on the rear window, we can kind of conclude that probably the pressure here is higher because the drag on the rear window is very much pressure based. This is very much pressure drag. So if we have a higher, a lower drag here, it's probably going to be a higher pressure then. So that higher pressure will change how much the flow shoots off from underneath the car. So that could be uh, the case here and changing how much energy we have around the rear windows. Unfortunately, we just don't have the flow around the rear wheels here to see more. So we can't tell that for sure, but it's probably the reason. Now in figures 23 and 24, we see the normalized velocity in the center plane, and that is normalized to the free stream flow. So red means it's the same speed or higher because the color bar doesn't go higher than one. So we can't tell whether it has actually speed up or not. So anyway, overall, the flow looks very similar among the four different configurations. Perhaps there's a bit of a change in the wake among them, where if you look at the light blue region, let me zoom in a little bit here. Too much. Yeah. Okay, I think that's about the same. But anyway, <laughs> if we look at this light blue region here, it looks to be a different shape for each one of these configurations. 
Interestingly, for the bottom right, which is the larger spoiler with the finlets, there is less light blue and more dark blue, which suggests a stronger wake. Anyway, in figures 25 and 26, these are pretty cool. So let's zoom in to a bit more. Okay, so these are the regions that we're really interested in anyway. Uh, they show the streamlines over the vehicle, and for the bottom two plots, it's clear that the larger spoiler, especially with the finlets, which is the right one here, uh, really reduces the flow up the rear window, and the flow is really quite stagnant in this upper section here. Even without the finlets, it's still quite stagnant. So from this, I think it's pretty clear and logical that the spoiler, particularly with the finlets, creates this zone where the flow doesn't move very much and is very much isolated from the rest of the flow. On the other hand, for the top two figures, even a small spoiler doesn't really isolate the flow over the top of the rear window that much, and then that creates more drag as the flow can meander around and more turbulent flow can really shoot in, and that's possibly going to also dirty the rear window more, so there's going to be more spoiling. So now I think we know one major reason why we saw lower drags with the larger spoiler, and especially with the finlets. Now in table three, we see the drag option, the uh, frontal area, the drag area and the change in the drag coefficient left to right of the various car configurations. Just quickly, if you don't know what the drag area is, then it's actually a more important value in the automotive industry than just the drag coefficient. So it's the drag coefficient multiplied by the frontal area. And the reason why that's more important is because cars are designed for certain things. So let's say we have a regular sedan. Well, they're made for transporting four or five people around and making it bigger is um, not really going to do anything like you can make it a million times bigger than it currently is and it doesn't make it any better at transporting around four or five people with something in the boot but if you were to make it a million times bigger that then is going to increase the overall drag <laughs> way more because even though the drag coefficient may be the same the frontal area is much greater so even if you have an incredibly low drag coefficient as well, let's say 0 0.1, you're still going to produce massive drag compared to a regular car because the frontal area is so large. So manufacturers, as well as governing bodies, really focus on the drag area because it's a more accurate representation of the drag a car will produce relative to another car. You can actually compare cars uh, much more accurately that way than just the drag coefficient because the area may change between cars, but the drag area is a consistent thing that um, is more uh, comparable. So that's why they included it here. Anyway, with this table, it shows that with the spoiler on the regular car, um, so the sports vehicle we can see here in figure 19 on the right here, the drag option actually increases a little bit and so does the drag area and goes up by like two counts. So it's probably within the CFD error, but maybe not. The drag area also increases more than that because the area is two, so any drag change in the uh, drag quotient is going to be multiplied by uh, two and a bit, so it's going to be like four to four and a bit counts. Then the modified spoiler, which is the large spoiler, is good no matter what, especially when you have the fins. I mean, it's only a few count reduction, but it's still a decent reduction. So the finlets really do seem good here, and that's probably why we see them so much on regular cars these days. They make the flow more stable around the back, so there's uh, less fluctuating forces on the car. It reduces the drag usually, and also potentially reduces spoiling, which means that the car stays cleaner at the back window. So that means that you're safer as well as you don't have to clean it as much. So with that, we come to the end of this podcast. And it's pretty cool how these finlets really made a big difference. They're not that big, but they can change the drag a little bit as well as the flow substantially. So if you want to learn how to do CFD, so you can do simulations like this or anything else you like, then check out our courses and link below, especially on OpenFoam, which is a completely free and very powerful CFD software. And if you like this podcast, hit the me likey and subscribe buttons, and we'll see you soon. Peace, amigos.